Welcome to Countdown to Infinity, a Marvel's Avengers podcast. We talk all things Marvel Cinematic Universe. And what a busy week we've had because, you know, there's a new movie out in theaters. Hopefully people watched it, The Marvels. We have a pod on that, our first reactions. We have more coming on that soon. But we're also talking about the finale to Loki Season 2. Um, oh, I have the name. Oh, Glorious Purpose. Yeah, mm, that's the name of the, yeah. the pod. I, there was another quote I had pulled up, and I was like, well, that isn't the title. That's just a big deal on this app. Glorious Purpose, the finale. This week, we're talking about it. We're going to talk about kind of the resolution to Loki's story, where the TVA ends up, um, some of the new characters that we knew and love and, and what happens to them. Uh, and I'm specifically specifically talking about one single dad of two boys who sells jet skis. Mm. And we're also going to talk about what this means for the future of the MCU because such a kind of insane and I would say the largest scope thing to happen in the MCU so far when Loki basically becomes everything oh uh, you know controlling all the timelines yeah uh, so much to talk about my name is Manuel. oh shit and oh, we have a guest oh. <laughs> i'm like i'm you i i'm half a regular half a guest these days <laughs> well, oh, we've dude. done so many different pods that i'm just used to like you introducing just, yourself uh, not I'm realizing friend. yeah I'm the different guest. uh audiences yeah yeah it's brent hi it's brent hi <laughs> you had a different experience with loki than us because you binged a lot of them all at once, right? So it kind of felt a little more connected maybe than us week to week trying to write down and read our notes from the priors. Right. Yeah. I, uh, well, yeah, I watched it in kind of a, uh, dis, a kind of disconnected way where like I watched the first one. <clears throat> yeah. And then, uh, like started the second, but I didn't finish it. And then I came back and watched like two through four. Uh, you know, four ends with, I mean, we're spoil spoilering. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Um, ends with the big, uh, you know, uh, spaghettification of, uh, you know, everybody and, and the, um, or is that what happens? Yeah. The, uh, the TVA, they all get kind of blasted and it's like a big yeah. cliffhanger. Um, that's like where I, I basically kind of binged up to, and then I was week to week for the last couple. Um, but, uh, yeah, wild show a lot for six episodes for sure. You jumping around and stopping sometimes and then returning to it and then moving forward. That is a pretty Loki way to watch Loki. I'll say, yeah. you know, because even if you were watching it sequentially like us, we basically did the same thing. We were story wise. We were moving. Yeah, definitely. It's, there's a lot of hopping around. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, jumping around with different characters and different timelines, different, uh, variants, things like that. Um, I guess so. Like it's, it's, you know, watching it in a very kind of chaotic way. Um, the only way it would be more chaotic is if you were like on a treadmill wearing a bicycle helmet. Uh, I was going to say watching with a blindfold, Loki. but that wouldn't make any sense oh, if you're not watching yeah. <laughs> Loki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a you yeah, just break interesting experience. Here's what happened in this episode of Loki Glorious Purpose. Loki masters his time slippage and attempts over and over again, Groundhog Day style, to save the time loom going earlier and earlier. But even after centuries, it still doesn't work. So he visits he who remains a variant of Kang that we met at the end of season one who reveals that the loom is a fail, fail safe and uh, can never be saved without killing Sylvie because Sylvie is hard pressed and will always try to kill he who remains. She convinces him, uh, sorry, uh, Loki talks to Sylvie and she convinces him to give them hope and to cho help them choose their own fate. Loki realizes that instead of choosing uh, what happens to them, he would become the time loom himself and sit on the throne forever. Back at the TVA, B-15 sits on the new war council. Mobius chooses to return to his former life Ravana Renslayer wakes up in the Shadow Realm after being pruned, and Victor Timely is revealed to have never gotten the manual in the first place. Ob writes a new manual, um, and it's a very uh, there's something that felt really final about this episode in terms of the story for Loki. But all that happens, a lot of repercussions, no after credit scene, but yeah, a lot I of. 
I was like, what's, I know. what's, yeah. what's happening? With- and Disney Plus has that thing where it has 50 different international credits, you know? Yeah. And by the time uh, those start to hit is when you yeah. shut things down. Because I, I was like, is it after this? I don't typically remember seeing this like before yeah. another scene, but yeah. It would be cool if they hid something in there, you know? Because mm. then it's just for the real credit heads. The credit heads. love the credits. Yeah, the, the credits themselves start to like yeah. form into image. <laughs> That's great. You know what the craziest credits are? Sorry, we're, we'll talk about Loki here soon. Video ah, game credits. Are, video game credits are sometimes wild. They are. You, do you just mean like in terms of length? Because holy guac. In, yeah, holy the guac. length of video game credits. I'm like trying to click through or scroll up or something. But Dude, I mean, a lot of times you can exit out after a little while. Okay, so we on our other pod screen slush we talked uh, starfield a little bit this this will get him in oh yeah they're they're in now <laughs> about credit. they weren't before yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> um no but yeah when i beat starfield uh holy cow man i like i hit credits i don't think it maybe it let me skip but i was like i'll just let it play whatever i'll go do something real quick came back like 20 minutes later still still rolling. going i was like wow damn god yeah that's impressive um, so everyone listening for Brent, there's your Brent old man rant um, mm. of the episode. Yep. Get, tune in next week. We'll figure out what else is going wrong. Br- Brant's rant. Brant a little bit, but it worked. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, Brent, what did you think about the season finale of Loki? Um, I thought it was pretty awesome. I think like, um, you know, I think that it, it kind of brings a lot of the stories to a close in like you said, like a pretty, pretty final feeling way. And I, I really liked that about it. Um, I think it's got like some of the most insane, like imaginative, like painterly, I guess maybe you could say, uh, visuals mm-hmm. that we've like ever seen in MCU stuff. Um, you mean, you mean Loki grabbing all the different threads of time? It's so, it's so fucking cool. And like, so yeah, imaginative and like cosmic and the scope of it. Like you said, is like, God, it really basically just dwarfs anything we've seen. Um, yeah. and is like full God mode Loki, um, in a way that's really cool. And it's also like upon thinking about his arc more over the movies and, um, maybe even like a little less. So this season of Loki, mm-hmm. I, I like, kind of where he ends up in that decision and kind of that, like, um, like, like again, like the, the sacrifices that he has to make to fulfill that glorious purpose where it's like, I think in episode five, maybe four, he talks about like all he wants is his friends. And it's like, ultimately at the end of the day, like he has to sacrifice his own Hmm. life kind of more or less. Um, for his friends and he's not going to get to be a part of that. And it's, it's uh really heavy. And I think, um, you know, the more, the more I sit with that, it's like, damn, that's uh that's, that's pretty wild. That's a, it's a really cool arc. It's, I guess maybe in some ways to me, a little similar, not like a bad way at all. Like, um, but like to, to like Iron Man for fuck's sake, like, um, mm. a little bit about that kind of like, you know, guy who's all like, um, kind of cocky and very like um self-involved or selfish or whatever um they've changed a a lot yeah it's like um and that that's really cool to to see loki's journey and i i'd say it's like that that big change for loki is like season one and two of the show Mm -hmm. um but yeah to see that and you know some of those ending reveals um really intriguing stuff like yeah Renslayer I don't think I caught that she was in the shadow realm is that kind of like a that's like where she is for sure yeah sort of where Loki ends up in season one with all those Loki variants I feel like we hear actually I do think we hear that giant cloud creature from uh remember Richard E. Grant as a Loki stopping I could absolutely Um, it's so good yeah (laughs) it feels like that's where she is but I don't know and she can get out then, I guess, because well, Loki also was able to leave. The way, and I, yeah, and I forgive me if I'm just completely off base with this, but like, I didn't look up stuff after, but like the, it seemed to me like the blue light approaching her was a mm-hmm. Kang, 
right? Is that supposed to, is that a read or is that like not really what? I don't know. It's possible. Yeah. Cause it was I like thought it was the creature. Oh, okay. From the first one, but I don't know. I'll, I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll email right now. Uh, support at marvel.com. Yeah. I, I heard, I heard Kev, uh, you know, one Kev Feige okay, himself do. mans the email. Um, I'll do K Feige at marvel.com. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Yeah. That's him. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's cool too. Um, I think maybe that confusion is kind of just like, uh, part of a bigger thing for me with this season. Uh, you know, which is like, I, th- I think it's, is honestly a pretty confusing uh, season of TV for, for me at least just speaking for myself. Mm-hmm. Like I think um, there's a lot of characters going back and forth. There's a lot of explaining technology in this scientific um, and time stuff and time, time, stuff. time, a lot time. Of time stuff. And like, I, for some reason I got really hung up on how do, how do these things work? What are the rules with their say time slippage or like mm-hmm. things like that? Like I, I got really hung up on some of that stuff to where at a certain point I was just kind of like, I'm just not really even going to think about that. Like I, you know, I'll mm-hmm. just go with the flow of the show. And, uh, you know, that, that really did hit for me with the finale and, um, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, I think I agree. All of the Loki stuff is, is, um, I think really important for him. Uh, I was just reading today how Tom uh, Hiddleston said that that line for you, for all of us that he says right before he leaves um, or before he gets swallowed by um, the loom Mm -hmm. uh, was something that he wanted in the scene. So he sat with someone and they went through all of the lines that he had in all of his Marvel movies until they figured out that that was like a good reference point, you know, from, Mm -hmm. from Thor. Um, but just like you said, his character, where he's been, kind of the catch-22 that he faces after He Who Remains says, you know, it the, the, the loom will always break if I die. Um, it, and that means that Sylvie needed to be the one to to pay a price or either, you know, if, if that was the choice that Loki had to make. And for him to decide that this is something as a god that I want to... Um, you know, do and is the right choice before we move further. You, you Drassel, the Norse world tree is who oh, he, I guess I, is referencing. I believe it's Idrasil. Idrasil. Okay. <laughs> Shoot. That's my bad Norse. You know, I can't speak Norse. <laughs> I know. Is yeah. it Viking or Viking? I, I don't that, know. That one's I Viking, say, actually. Yeah, that a lot of people okay. get that one wrong all the time. <laughs> the most easy thing. And he also looks like a kind of like an hourglass i guess too you know his roots and everything yeah. anyways i think it's just a cool way to um add to loki's story and i think he's he's definitely if he's not top 5 he's definitely one of the top 10 characters now in all of marvel because we've spent so much time with him yeah. we have seen him as the main villain in in the first avengers film and then kind of become someone closer to thor and then here we are you know so many centuries later doing this at the TVA. I, I enjoyed watching what happens to the TVA. I think that's going to be really fun to follow. They seem to have a step up above Kang the Conqueror. I mean, there's a moment where B-15 is like, how many of them know about the TVA? And some of some Kangs apparently don't. Um, and then they don't give Victor Timely that manual like they uh, you right. know previously did. So they stopped that Kang from happening. So I don't know if we ever see the, t- the TVA ever again that they could be just on a whole nother level now that um, they're free. The loom is still there ish because it's now Loki. Um, yeah. So I, I think that's really cool where the TVA ends up Mobius. I feel like this is it for him. He's retired. He's with his, you know, his kids. The Ravana is an interesting kind of loose thread. I don't really know what happens to Sylvie, but that's really fun to think about too. Back um, at Mickey so, D's. Yeah. Back at Mickey flipping, D's. Flipping burgers. Yeah. And she still has her temp pad, I think. So you yeah, know. she can she can. Hop. She wants to, you know, she wants to head out to somewhere other than in the middle of Oklahoma, you know, at a McDonald's <laughs> ever in her life. Yeah, she can if she wants to. But yeah, I thought the scope was really good. And man, just some of the coolest looking stuff we've seen in the MCU, and kind of the most, I don't know, like ethereal almost. And it's almost like I know it's. Uh, Loki is is literally pulling on the strands of time, mm-hmm. but 
there's something really kind of trippy about that. You know, it's like a Jack Kirby. It's like a crazy thing that it's like a, not a personification of the basis for our universe is a guy, you know, pulling together, holding the stuff. universe together. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like, that's, that's crazy. That's like, that's bonkers. And then, you know, we've got all these other shows happening in New York city. Yeah. People just walking around. There's and the only reason they're around is because Loki is <laughs> a giant tree now, you know? Yeah. It's kind of, kind of fun that this part of the MCU is open. Um, yeah, abs- I don't know. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that always felt like the direction to go after, you know, um, I was going to say like Avengers, just the first one, but like, I mean, even post end game, post Thanos, like yeah. you've, you've opened up this larger cosmic thing. And like, um, you know, I, I'm sure like a lot of the listeners are fans of the comics and stuff like that. Some of the best stuff in the Marvel comics is some of that really cosmic large mm-hmm. scale, um, you know, you know, stuff like the one above all and things like that. And, um, I I'd love to keep seeing like, you know, massive scope, uh, MCU, you know, not, not for all all of it. Like, I, I think that it's incredibly important to have like street level, um, Mm. you know, very human relatable like characters too. But that's a great thing about the comics is like you, you had to have that just massive gulf of just like so much in between from like the smallest, you know, person on the street, to uh like god of the cosmos uh loki king of time or whatever the fuck he is now <laughs> yeah wild. i think that there's like yeah and it, it's we'll talk about this it, it, this is more so a thing for movies but you know whenever they go into this realm it can get really big in scale really quickly you know shang chi we're in another kind of dimension mm-hmm. um in eternals there's this giant celestial sticking out of the earth yeah, like yeah. there's a lot of cool, funky stuff that's around, and I guess the people of Earth are just at this point, kind of they've seen it all at exactly, this point. Yeah, they, they saw yeah, that everyone's big a guy. Skull. All the presidents are scrolls. All the presidents, are you know, scrolls. they're just they're just over it. I mean, I, half of the, half yeah. of them disappeared, Brant. Half of them dusted. Exactly, came back Ugh. five years later the same age and everybody else is five years older like <laughs> so I, you 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 tell them the guy that attacked new york in 2012 is now holding all of time they just shrugged their shoulders fucking what a, <laughs> whatever man listen uh it's hump day i'm gonna leave work early today that's yeah not, like but it's it's a joke everybody i feel like makes but like that's a show i would kill to see the oh, office yeah. in uh mcu <laughs> world i think would be incredible I feel like the weird mistrust of anything. I mean, nobody's working a nine to five. They're all, I mean, yeah, they're they, all on vacation. Just saying, look, it all ends. It's gotta just be whenever. a fucking like utopian, just agreement yeah. at this point where it's like, <laughs> listen, our lives are on the line every other day. Let's just yeah. take it easy. Let's get through the week. <laughs> Let's make it to Friday, huh? Um, um, so there's a lot of <laughs> speculation about w- why the 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 show ended this way, um, even outside of Loki itself. But when talking about the broader MCU, because here is a chance for them to maybe veer away from 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 Kang the Conqueror and him being set up as a giant villain uh, because of the issues Jonathan majors is, is having, you know, in the le- in legally. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's out there. Uh, of course, there's always the idea that like multiverses just need to continually be, you know, you know, explored and explained and obviously variants help with that. Loki, this whole thing is helpful with that. Yeah. Um, but anything that you can think of, you know, I mean, Kang's a big one. Some people even think Loki is going to be the ultimate villain, you know, for whatever phase is coming up. But mm. any of those pique your interest or or you're that 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 or do you think it's you know kind of inconsequential that that they that it seems like there's some course corrects in this episode? Yeah, I guess uh I haven't I hadn't really thought about it much until you talked about um Yeah, I mean specifically with the finale, I feel like Kang's presence or like his uh, 
yeah, like his presence, his kind of threat, his uh, what he represents to the world at large is like mm-hmm. really kind of uh, not there in the finale. And like, I I don't know if the the creator's writer has talked about that at all as being something you know, maybe planned after certain things came to light and stuff like that. But like, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, if it feels like they could definitely pivot away from Kang, um, I think pretty easily, um, because like for how much he's appeared in stuff, I feel like they haven't firmly, and I guess quantum mania might kind of be undercutting this a little bit, but like, yeah, I feel like they haven't super solidly established him as mm-hmm. the next Thanos, right? Like if that's the goal to make Kang that character, I feel like they haven't really done that yet. Yeah. And so, even though we've seen him a lot, we have seen him a lot. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's his presence crazy. is all throughout Loki. Like I said, I mean, he's the villain in quantum mania. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's and we like, see the council or we see a lot of them. Yeah. And I, I think they could pretty, pretty close to seamlessly pivot to yeah. somebody like Dr. Doom or uh Magneto or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's definitely possible for sure. It feel it feel and there, there, there were conversations, the, the, you know, the writer was explicitly asked about this. If it was a course correction away from uh, Jonathan majors, and he said, of course, said he couldn't say anything, but that uh, all of the answers were on the screen, whatever that means, um, you know, that maybe this was because even the TVA is sort of hunk- hunting Kangs um, at this point. And uh, today they announced that or sources are, are semi confirming that the writer of the Kang dynasty is uh, no longer working at Marvel which it which would be kind of the big Kang finale, you know, movie. Yeah. At the end of the phase or whatever, the the multiverse saga. So it, it's definitely possible. And I do think it feels if it does happen that it is somewhat seamless um because it's sort of a villain that we saw a bunch that was just defeated in the T- by by Loki and the TVA. Yeah. And it's kind of yeah. cleanly okay, cool, you know. We obviously saw him fight a bunch of ants in Ant Man and and right. and Ant Man as well. So that you know that's good. He who remains sort of feels like the bit of uh, the most consequential version of I the think, Kang. Yeah, I think that's you know? that's when I think about Kang, it's like there's not um, so. And this is kind of what I was like talking about a second ago, but like we haven't really seen a um, what his like real motivation is in anything yet, you Mm. know, outside of like he who remains and maybe I am forgetting something or something like that. But like, there hasn't been a super established, like I want this and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z to get Mm. that done. Um, We have just seen he who remains who's at like the end of time. Um, Mm. And uh, so, yeah, I think that they could pretty seamlessly figure something out. Yeah. And the the introduction, I think, of Victor Timely in this series is is one of the things that help reinforce that theory as well, because it sort of is like he was he became a Kang because another I, Kang sent back a, a manual to the TVA. But if so that he kind cycle of, is stopped, then yeah, right. it, they obviously stopped it in this one universe or in this one timeline. So it seems like it, especially if you can time travel. And right. now Loki is the loom, so there's no ultimate threat from from he remains that you could go through and pretty quickly just remove all the Kangs, you know, especially if you have time travel. Just find out what that initial thing is. It sort of is a thankless job, I'll say, because uh, it's established there's infinite um, Kangs. Oh, so I don't know. Quantum, this yeah, is yeah, like, that's right. If this is like full time what the TVA does now or whatever. Right. Yeah. But I don't know. Well, let's, let's talk about the TVA. They, they sort of have this existential thing of, you know, they all had their memories erased. Mobius makes the choice at the end of this to retire and go to his reality where he's a, a dad of two sons. But do you think, what, what do you think of 
the TVA. I mean, for me, I'm like, that's cool. They get to choose what they get to do, what they want to do, and they can go back if they want to. But how do you recruit people for that? And Man. you know, like, yeah. if you're just, it's attrition. If everyone's just like, I'm out, I'm retiring. You got to be able to hire. <laughs> Look, well, I know this yeah. is like an HR question for the TVA, but I'm just like. <laughs> Oh, are you about to upsize yeah. your workforce or something? This, this, yeah, this is one of the, the the kind of many questions I have about the world of the MCU and the TVA and stuff yeah. like that. Like, um, I mean, listen, they're not wiping people's memories anymore, right? Like, there's That's no reason nice. to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it's it's all just like opt in. You want to do some like time detective shit for a couple of years <laughs> and then dip yeah. out. Um, yeah, I think that's that. You know, I think it really. I can. I think it leaves them in a you know, pretty fitting spot for them to kind of be operators in the background. And like, um, you know, if they do pop up in something in the future, like they're there, there's not some kind of like super active, you know, uh, kind of threat facing them down. That's like Mm -hmm. the season was where it was like, people just like, Oh shit. Like, uh, you know, (laughs) this thing's getting wrecked. Like, uh, like currently we got to figure this out. Um, so, yeah. And I think you brought up Mobius. Can we talk about yeah. him for just a sec? Yeah. I found his ending. I'm curious what the read is on this uh-huh. because I think his ending I read. And I think, I think the show's takeaway is that that is a deeply sad ending. Yeah. Because it, it very much, I'm going to reference a movie that is referenced a lot. And I think you'll appreciate it gave me the searchers vibes where like Whoa. he is there sitting watching himself, right? Like he's not, um, yeah. he's not jumping in to replace his oh, wow. self. Okay. Right. And yeah. like, did I see something wrong or I thought that's what it was. He's, he's watching, uh, did I, am I missing something? I could have sworn that it's like him, like yeah. he's watching himself with his two kids and uh-huh. then it ends on his face. Maybe I am forgetting something, but it's it it does feel like a cowboy shot for sure. Like you know, this like, is what does uh, he do? at least. But I think it yeah. also is one for his consciousness more so than him actually just watching on because I I don't know the rules and I don't think we really. I'm sure there is a definitive answer, but so much of it for me is like, well, so does he remember? He's does does he remember that he ever was in the TVA, you know, mm. if that's the choice and he wants to take that, or is he just watching this happen and he's going to go make his own path? It sort of is kind of weird to think about. I guess I feel that's, like, yeah, that's maybe the, the choice is, I think the choice was big, you know, him choosing to be there and they do talk about him retiring from the TVA. So I think the most basic answer is probably he just becomes that guy. He becomes he's the go dad. Burn himself and and yeah, he's just going to do that. You know, that's just going to be who he is, and he doesn't remember the TV area and something like that. Mm-hmm. But but B fifteen doesn't does tell him like if you ever want to come back, there's a seat for you. So it makes it's weird because you're like, okay, well then yeah, he'll remember because he's gonna yeah, have the he can go back if he wants to. But I don't know. I I do think that we'll never see Mobius again. I think so in any MCU thing. I mean, listen, I'd love to see Owen Wilson pop Back. up as Mobius yeah. on one of these one of these silly Rick and Morty planets they're he could popping be, in. He could be selling a jet ski to God, Captain America. To some, I, yeah, or some silly oh. alien. Like, I, I truly would be, love it. It's got to gotta be the Hulk. That. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, I could see that. That would be super Slinging cool. Slinging space jet skis. Yeah. Someone I do think we're going to see more of, <clears throat> unless we're just totally dropping the TVA, or at least I hope so, is Kihu Kwan as, as Ouroboros, OB. I don't know what the Emmy landscape is like, but you know, if there's a lot of noms, I think he could totally be in there as being kind of this fresh new energy to the Loki show. OB seems to be uh, still at the TVA, rewrites the manual because we've yeah, got yeah. a Loki now. Um but it it's uh, cool. I was really happy to see him in the show, and um, yeah, I'm I'm hopeful we see more of him. But Obi was one of my favorite parts of the yeah. I I think the season same same here. I liked Obi a lot, and um, yeah, I feel like they definitely leave. Uh, you know, obviously his story has like a conclusion and a and a pretty happy ending. Um, 
you know, writing the second volume, writing the wrongs, I guess, of the the prior one. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I'd love to see him again. Like he's he's great in everything. Yeah, Q Kwan been doing some promo for Loki now that the strike is over, and yeah, it's really surprise. He's really charming, and God, you know, people. I yeah, look. Th- they just announced that Loki season two had this giant uptick for the finale week. To I think over eleven million people watched it, um, and uh, you know, it's now this. I believe the number two finale, only behind Mandalorian for Disney Plus, and I think that's all. Ku Kwan hopping on Instagram. Yeah. You know, in that one day, everyone's like, oh, yeah, I'll watch whatever he told me to. Yeah. I'm in. Love this guy. He's charming as hell. Let's uh, catch yeah. up on the show. <laughs> well, yeah. let's give our final thoughts on Loki, the finale, and the season, and maybe even Loki. Who knows? It's the jury's out whether. Oh, on the man. Hiddleston comes back. God. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. As Loki. It's, it's, it, Hiddleston's also said that you never should close the door on anything because he said he thought he close the door four times and which is true. You know, I think he literally thought that Avengers movie was great and, a, and an awesome way to go out. Yeah. <laughs> but then they asked him to come back for Thor. And so it, I wouldn't put it past them to bring him back. And I just don't understand. It, th- this feels like a really good ending, I think. So that's yeah. why it feels a little less likely, likely, but yeah. I guess he could leave or something but um brent what are your final thoughts on the finale and loki and and the show and the character oh my gosh that's a, that you gave me a laundry list uh, i know no but yeah i think the and the and, and question b okay um okay, what part you do i'm just kidding <laughs> uh what would you do next with loki um i know i wow. do that yeah. one too actually oh, yeah. oh, yeah, i've I forgotten that. half of these already um Okay. No, the I think the finale was was a really gratifying uh, ending for you know Loki the character. Um, you know, I, I think yeah, we talked about his kind of arc and uh, really from the begin from fucking the first Thor, and that's why I love in it might even be the finale or episode five. I love that he tells that story from you know uh, talking about his brother going to Mm. earth and all that and like throwing it back to the like OG Thor movie. Um, And I heard that was Tom Hiddleston's idea, which is like so cool. You can tell that like he deeply cares about playing Loki Mm. and you could just see it. Like he's so good in the show. Um, You know, some of the best visuals in any MCU thing, I think in that finale, so good. Um, You know, I, I, I think like the, the show for me, like really took like a plot heavy, focus this season big time uh i think like a lot of character stuff like was kind of backgrounded for Mm -hmm. you know time shenanigans and kind of like uh introducing stuff like that like it really it didn't hit as as much for me as as season one did which i i really loved season one uh but still like it there's no show like it i mean i guess you could maybe say doctor who but like there's no Mm -hmm. mcu thing like it and i think like um you can tell that so much passion and stuff went into making the show and um, it's so creative and um, so much fun. And yeah, as for Loki, uh, I think, yeah, without a doubt, like top five MCU characters. um, I mean, really gunning for one, honestly, at various points, just because, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just because the amount of time we've had with him Mm -hmm. is um, more than any other MCU character ever yeah i think and it's a range too i mean oh, we, yeah. we talk iron man we talk about stark you know first iron man and his change to giving his life in in endgame but yeah loki has also had a very similar you know uh path <laughs> twists and turns and ultimately kind of holding up the universe right now yeah it's it's uh you know especially the more you think about kind of the journey and like the movies and show he was in and it's like he was the, he was the villain in the first Avengers movie. Yeah. Like the villain of that movie and the villain of that movie had just had a like heartfelt kind of heavy send off in an, in a Marvel mm-hmm. show. That's just kind of, it's wild. Um, yeah. A second season of a Marvel show. <laughs> second season of a Marvel Crazy. show. Uh, yeah. And so it's, yeah, I'm going to miss him. I feel like his presence uh, is, uh, you know, he, he brings so much presence and character and personality to the MCU. And um, 
it's gonna it's gonna be hard to kind of top that again but um yeah they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna try yeah the show i the show itself i really enjoyed i think it was a very complete show and i, I mean that is it has its own identity it obviously is sort of set in this you know retro um, yeah like the retro bureaucratic ages yeah it, it has this film grain so credit to the directors and the people that developed that style but even structure wise we were able to do some fun stuff with time travels and the montages and even this finale had that fun groundhog day sequence um and then revisits a you know the the, the finale of the season the first season mm-hmm. so it's a really ambitious show which which I really like. I think the sequences were really um, uh, uh, cool to see visually. Uh, I, as far as Loki, I think it's you know one of the most insane turns for the character. Um, and then th- it's also just like Tom Hiddleston. Man, Marvel has a lot of these. You know where, that where you're kind of the character is so imbued with the way the actor portrayed him. Like yeah. Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. and Hugh Jackman and Wolverine. It's hard to recast that. It's possible, but it's almost like people have an image. That of is a high bar. That. Yeah. And it's like uh, Johnny Depp, Jack Sparrow style. But that's Tom Edelson and Loki, I think now. it's it's He's going to be that brooding, really smart, maybe mischievous guy. And, you know, with all the subtle stuff. And it, it's, it's cool to see that he kind of was able to turn this character into that for us in live action and yeah um who knows we'll see more important series overall not just for loki who's one of the again one of the faves fave characters the mcu but important to the future i mean we're speculating on the kang thing because it wasn't super overt but maybe it was we're speculating on the multiverse stuff but who knows if we're if that's all real then this is a very important pretty crucial yeah pretty crucial moments of this storytelling stuff. And um, we'll see where the MCU goes from here. The only two movies, Brian, I think I texted this to you. The only two movies that are um, actually in production and basically won't be canceled in the phase. They've announced so many. They announced like nine movies. Right. The only two that can't be shelved is Deadpool 3 and um, the uh, the new Captain America movie with Harrison Ford. It's not called New World Order, but it's something similar than that. Um, yeah. So those are the only two that we know we're getting. Everything after that is interesting. They don't have to reference Kang in either of them. I'm sure Deadpool 3 <laughs> happened during a strike, and so did the other one. But Deadpool 3 has it's going to probably reference all of the MCU drama because that's how Ryan Reynolds and... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You know, is it's maybe they'll be, talk about Loki. Yeah, they'll talk about the strike, that fourth wall meta yeah. thing. It's, it's going to be, be like thirty just minutes where the screen is just black. Yeah, and there's no audio where it's just like yeah, the but strike. You, I get it. You know, because of, you know, because of the strike and how long it's been, they're going to be talking making like Snyder cut jokes, and you're like, that's kind of over, mm, but I guess okay, that's still stuff. funny. You know. <laughs> Uh, we'll have to see what that's like. But we've come to the end of this episode. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much for listening to our apps on Loki and possibly the series finale. Because <clears throat> nobody knows about another season. I don't think they're going to do another season. Yeah. They may do another TVA show. I don't think it'll be a Loki. Mm, hey, a case of the anything. week TVA time jumping. Yeah. That's just Doctor Who, but that sounds good. I know. <laughs> I think that would be really fun, but they totally could do that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so who knows? Well, maybe we'll be back to this, but it could be the finale to all of that. Um, Brent, thanks so much for being on this app. What, yeah. do, you, what do you have to plug? Uh, yeah. Check out the Delphin Pod Patreon stuff. So Screen Slush is kind of the big one that we do for that Patreon. There's also public uh, episodes on, yeah. you know, podcast uh, network stream or what do you call them pod catchers is that what anybody calls them anymore i don't think that's uh, i don't know what that means wherever you get podcasts whatever youtube are TV, you talking whatever. about uh ripley from alien a pod catcher a pod catcher she love to catch any but is, yeah the the pod catches ripley uh um, yeah but uh yeah Check that out. Check out Countdown Strikes Back. It's on a little bit of a hiatus because Star Wars is on a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, yeah. And Revenge of the Sequel 
um, new episodes of uh, of that are dropping. So check it out. Ton of new apps every week. New apps. Very oh, yeah. very fun stuff. Yeah, support the pod. Patreon.com slash Delphin Pod. Before we leave, Brent, who would you recast Kang with? So let's say they don't end Kang. So Ooh. Jonathan Majors has trouble. Trouble. He's going away. Who would you cast as Kang? This will be the end of that. This is going to. I be think story. I've got. I've got one. If you want to think more, or I may throw you off. What is someone? I forgot. I saw a pitch that someone was saying who was the villain from guardians three. I forget that actor's name, but they were saying that, uh, that that actor should play Kang. And I was like, God, he'd be great. Um, yeah. I'm forgetting his name. Yeah. The villain from guardians three, that that actor should play Kang, that they could do some kind of, you know, something happens, some like face swap stuff. But, um, I think that oh, the high kind of evolutionary, high evolutionary Woody. Um, Iwuji. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that could be cool. I don't have yeah. another one off the cuff. Yeah, what about Man, you? I think, you know what would be cool? Hmm. Who I could totally see doing ve- the, the villainous monologues and play a million different characters. I think Lakeith Stanfield would be cool. Oh, wow. If they got him. Dude. To, I mean, because he, he did the Haunted Mansion movie, so he'll do a big Disney movie. I think that would be fun. Feel- if not Kang, just some, some role. I mean... That that would be killer. Yeah. God, what if he Oh he now you got it. my mind racing. Now my mind's on fire now. I was gonna say Mr. Fantastic would honestly oh, man. fucking Stanfield yeah. would kill that role, honestly. Yeah, but I, he would make he's too likable. Because Mr. Fantastic can sometimes be a little arrogant. You I know? think he can do it though. You think I he think could he do it? Oh. Totally do the kind of like I'm really yeah. smart. I kind of, I'm this, and he is, he's the smartest guy in every room he's in. Like, I think yeah. he could kill. But I feel like he would kind of, uh, disarm you a little bit. He would be, it would still feel like he's being really nice, even if he's egging you or mm. something. I guess that's possible. He's got to yeah. be a dick. You got to have someone who could be like a yeah. straight up. He would asshole. be a great King though. That is a very good yeah. pick. Yeah. All right. Well, look at that, everyone. If it happens, you heard it here first. Yeah. We predicted it. <sighs> Thanks. Bye. Bye.